Welcome back. The NFL is back and we are excited to see what happens here as week one starts this Thursday. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this started the right way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hashtag Sports. What stupid thing do we do this time? Hello fellow Bills fans, Sean Rogers, Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth and right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! If you weren't with us during the off season, I have joined with Paul Mario from Hashtag Sports to continue to give you great Buffalo Bills and NFL content all in one channel. So if you enjoyed these weekly pick em videos, if you enjoy my live play by play reaction to every single Buffalo Bills game, make sure if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, you hit that subscribe button and continue to like and follow and comment on these videos. Let me know what you guys think about week one. Let me know what your picks are, whether you want to pick them straight up, whether you want to pick them against the spread. Let me know in the comment section who you pick to win these games week one obviously this is one of the best weeks of the nfl football season this is when some of the surprises start to start to happen you start taking notice to teams that maybe during the off season weren't getting any attention and there are going to be some teams who everyone thinks are going to be a powerhouse or are going to be uh really great this season that might not live up to snuff and we're going to start finding out who those teams are here in week one however before we get into that if you are a fan of picking these games. If you are a fan of maybe getting a little action, right? Putting your money where your mouth is. Hashtag sports has a great deal for you. Hashtag sports has teamed with mybookie.ag. Link in the description below. Okay, if you put in HTS as the promo code, then mybookie.ag will go ahead and match dollar for dollar your first deposit up to $1,000. So again, if you're looking for a little side action, whether it be in-game betting, whether it be future bets, no matter what you like. I'm not an expert, okay? Last year, if you look at my record, probably only four or five games above 500 when you talk about against the spread. So we're looking to do better than that this year. If you look, now we got a ticker that's going to keep track of how I do this season. You keep track as well. So just let me know how I do. And again, in the comment section, let me know your picks uh, for this season. So we're going to start off with the Thursday night matchup. Of course, starting off Thursday night as the championship banner gets raised in Tampa Bay as the defending Super Bowl champions go up against the Dallas Cowboys. A lot of great things going on in this matchup. Dak Prescott's coming back. If you're a Dak Prescott fan, obviously if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, I know a lot of you are, you have a little bit of anger towards the Dallas Cowboys. However, if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, you may also have a little bit of anger towards the QB for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that's TB12, Tom Brady, who pretty much owned us when he played in New England. So I personally think this is going to be an inter interesting matchup as both these teams are NFC teams. I have no dislike or like for them at all. So I'm really looking forward to watching this game. Now, currently the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are eight point favorites. And when you see a two score uh, spread like this, it really makes you worry about where your money is going right now. For me, if I had placed my in this game, me personally, I never put money on prime time games, whether you say you think it's rigged or, or something is going on. I'm not sure. I just feel like there's a lot of funny stuff that happens on prime time games. And I just don't feel confident enough to put my money in the, into that kind of thing. Again, maybe it's a superstition, whatever you want to call it. But in this game, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers favored by eight points. Again, you're talking about Dak Prescott on one side uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Zeke Elliott got some really good wide receivers. Amari Cooper, I feel like he's getting overlooked as one of the better wide receivers of the game. I personally still think he is. You can go over to the other side of Tampa Bay. You talk about good wide receivers. They have a plethora of good wide receivers. So now you look at the defenses. Dallas's defense, Pretty, pretty pathetic last year, right? Pretty bad last year. I think they were historically, or on pace at some points in the season, to be historically bad. You look at Tampa Bay, obviously Super Bowl, Super Bowl champs. 
right? That defense got after Patrick Mahomes, made him have to scramble. Patrick Mahomes still got off some great throws. Wide receivers, the timing was off still, unable to come down with those uh, catches. So you look at these two teams. I like both their offenses. Give me Tampa Bay's defense. Give me Tampa Bay to win this game. And give me Tampa Bay to cover that eight-point spread. Again, I know it's a big spread. I personally will not be putting any money on this game. But if I were to put money on this game, I would take Tampa Bay and I would take the eight points. So give me Tampa Bay to win this game. Give me Tampa Bay to cover an eight-point spread. Moving on to Sunday, and I know as Bills fans, we're all excited for Sunday, so let's get into that game first, right? The Buffalo Bills at home, home opener against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, a lot of people are sleeping on the Steelers, and if you're not a Bills fan watching this thing, oh, of course he's going to pick the Bills because he's a Bills fan. Go back to my videos last year on Believer's Talk. I did not pick the Bills every single week. So uh, even though I love the Bills, I will always be cheering for the Bills come Sunday. These picks are not exactly uh, by my heart. They're more by what I think is going to happen. You look at the Steelers team started 11-0 and last season, won the AAC North. People forget about that. I know we want to say, oh, Ben's getting older. This offensive line isn't going to be as good as it was last season. I understand all of that, and I don't disagree with any of that. But I think people underestimate how good Mike Tomlin is. Remember, Mike Tomlin had an 8-8 eight eight season with pretty much their fourth string quarterback in Duck Hodges one season. Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season as a head coach. So you have to really look at those numbers and say that he knows what he is doing. I feel like Mike Tomlin gets underrated sometimes as one of the better head coaches in the NFL. So if Bills fans don't think this game is going to be close, I think they got another thing coming. Because the Bills currently right now are six and a half point favorites. And I don't think week one, the Buffalo Bills are six and a half points better than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, if I'm wrong, let's say I'm wrong and the Bills blow the roof off the place. They blow out the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's say they went by two, three scores. I think that's a huge statement for the Buffalo Bills. And I think that the NFL really has to be put on notice at that point about how good this Buffalo Bills team is going to be. So I think the Bills are going to win this game. Give me the Buffalo Bills to win this game. But as far as a six and a half point spread, I don't think they're going to cover that. Give me the Steelers to cover the spread, but give me the Bills to win and move to 1-0. and Next, we have the Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles going to Atlanta. A lot of questions for both of these teams. I feel like both of these teams are in rebuilding stages, so I'm not really looking forward to this matchup. I think that this might be a good game, but only because both these teams are pretty bad right now, okay? Or at least that's my off-season outlook for both these teams. However, you look at the Atlanta Falcons, they still do have Matt Ryan. They have a good quarterback. I think that that leadership, that veteran uh, savvy type play could get them past the Philadelphia Eagles. I will not be picking either, either of these teams a lot this season. I have the Falcons finishing, finishing last in the NFC South, and I have the Eagles finishing last in the NFC East. But in this matchup, give me the Atlanta Falcons to win this game. And give me the Atlanta Falcons to cover a three and a half point spread. Moving on, we're going to talk about the New York Jets, the new look New York Jets. And we're going to talk about the Carolina Panthers. New look Carolina Panthers, too, adding former New York Jet quarterback Sam Darnold during the offseason. Of course, Christian McCaffrey's coming back. I think a lot of people are interested to see Christian McCaffrey back on the field after an injury sidelined him most of last season. Carolina's at home in this matchup. There's no reason to not pick the Carolina Panthers to win this game. Now, when you talk about the spread, five points seems like a lot. But if Chris McCaffrey can get going, I believe he can. Maybe not in the running game because this Jets front four is really good. Uh, but in that passing game, I think it'll add a different element. And the Carolina Panthers not only win this game, the Carolina Panthers cover that five-point spread. So give me the Panthers to win. And give me the Panthers to cover a five point spread moving on you're looking at the washington football team and the los angeles chargers i really like both of these teams i think this is going to be a great inner conference matchup you have the nfc east washington football team winners of that division last year you have the los angeles chargers justin herbert coming on strong listen i really believe i honestly believe that the la chargers may give the chiefs a run for their money for the AFC West this season. I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk 
for the Kansas City Chiefs. I like Justin Herbert. I like this offense a lot. I think this defense is much improved. So give me uh, the Chargers to contend with the Kansas City Chiefs. However, look at this defense of the Washington football team. Chase Young, I think he's one of the best young players of this game. And if Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to do well this season, it's going to be early on. So give me the Washington football team, surprisingly to some people, to win this game. They're underdogs in this one at home. But give me the Washington football team to win this game and give me them to then beat and cover that uh, underdog status. They are one-point underdogs. I need them to beat the spread in this game. Moving on, you're talking about the Detroit Lions at home going against the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers suffered so many injuries last season. It was insane. And I don't care who the quarterback is, whether it be Jimmy Garoppolo, whether it be Trey Lance, I really like the San Francisco team. I think they can go back. Kyle Shanahan, I think he's a really good head coach. I think that they can go back to where they were two, three seasons ago when they won the division and were in the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. You look at this Detroit Lions team. I like what they're doing. I like what they're doing, trading Matthew Stafford, getting Goff, a former number two overall draft pick, and two first rounders for uh, uh, for, for Stafford. I think that's a great haul for them. However, I still think they're in a rebuilding year. I think it's going to take them a couple of years, new head coach, to figure out their identity and figure out where they want to be. I like DeAndre Swift a lot. I think he's a great young running back. However, we know the story with running backs. How many years does he have on his on those legs before those give out? I feel like a lot of his years may be wasted in Detroit as they try to figure out what they're doing. But I like this team. I feel like golf could give you uh, some productivity. I just don't like them enough to be a team that I think is going to be contending for the Super Bowl again this season. Give me the 49ers to win this game. However, seven and a half points on the road is a lot. Give me the Lions to cover a seven and a half point spread. Again, the Niners will win this game, but the Lions will cover a seven and a half point spread. Going on, we got the Seattle Seahawks going to Indianapolis. Again, another great interconference matchup. You have the Seahawks, Russell Wilson, great offense, great wide receivers, great linebackers on the defensive side of the ball. Going up against Carson Wentz, Frank Reich back together again, the Indianapolis Colts. A lot of people high on the Colts this season. Me, not so much, okay? I'm not sure. I'm not sold that just because Carson Wentz is back with the guy who got him so much success in Philly three, four years ago, that he's all of a sudden going to be successful again. Again, Carson Wentz was one of the worst quarterbacks in the league last season, if not the worst quarterback in the league in a lot of statistical categories. So you have to take that into account. I'm not saying he's not going to be better. I think he's going to be better. But listen, Phillip Rivers did a great job for the Colts last year, and still they lost in the wild card round to our Buffalo Bills. Can Carson, or yeah, can Carson Wentz do better than Phillip Rivers did last season? I just don't see it. So I wonder how good the Colts will be this year. And I think Seattle knows how tough that division is going to be, how tough the NFC West is going to be. So if they're going to lose a game, they want to be to an AFC team, but they don't want it to be week one. They want to make sure they keep pace in a tough NFC West. And it starts week one with the Seattle Seahawks defeating the Indianapolis Colts on the road and the Seattle Seahawks covering a two and a half point spread. Now, moving on, you have the Minnesota Vikings playing against the Cincinnati Bengals. Both these teams, uh, I believe, are, are meddling a little bit, right? I don't think we know exactly what to expect out of either team. Dalvin Cook, uh, really good running back. But Kirk Cousins, man, he's just been so disappointing if you're a Minnesota Vikings fan and you regret completely giving him a fully guaranteed contract. You look on the other side of the ball, you got the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow, uh, high octane, very explosive, very exciting to watch at the beginning of last season. Unfortunately, the offensive line did not hold up, did not do him any favors, and they cost him the rest of the season, um, him getting injured, unfortunately. I don't see this Bengals offensive line that much better. I don't see it that much improved. Now, they got themselves some more offensive talent, so maybe we have more three, five-step drops, get the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands quicker. But I just don't know if that's going to be enough. The Vikings at home in this game. Give me the Vikings to win this game. However, give me the Cincinnati Bengals to cover a three and a half point spread. Now, if this moves to three, I think that's where the, the money is. I think that the Vikings win this game uh, by three points. So if it moves to three, maybe stay away from it. 
but 3.5, give me the Bengals to cover against uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Next, we move on to the game of probably two of the worst teams in the NFL, okay? You're talking about the Houston Texans, no Deshaun Watson, of course, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, of course, the Jaguars are excited because they have a new quarterback as well, right? Uh, Lawrence over there, rookie quarterback coming out. I know a lot of people have been down on the Texans this year, right, without J.J. Watt, J.J. Watt leaving. You're talking about all, everything going on with Deshaun Watson. That's a big mess. But you do have Terod Taylor in there. And if Bills fans will remember Terod Taylor, who took the Buffalo Bills out of their 18-year playoff drought. Now, again, you, you can only expect Terod Taylor to be a game manager and uh, not turn the ball over, but he's really good at that. He's really good at not turning the ball over. Now, remember on this channel specifically, Paul Mario did a video about you know, if, if he leads the league in three and outs, does that matter if he doesn't have turnovers? I remember that conversation. But, yes, it does. It honestly does. So I like Terod Taylor as, as a potential quarterback here for the Houston Texans. Really didn't get a fair shot anywhere he's been so far. Remember in Cleveland, he got a concussion. Baker comes in, end of story there. And for the Chargers, uh, he had some issue with medical staff on the sideline. They put a needle in too hard. I don't want to talk about needles too much in this current world setting, but uh, put a needle in his uh, ribs too hard, hit something. I don't know. Next comes Justin Herbert, and the rest is history there. So now Terod Taylor gets a chance to be a starter. Can he prove uh, that he, he, earns, he earned that right? I think he does. I think in this game, I don't expect much out of the Texans this year. I don't expect much out of the Jaguars this year. But in this game, give me the Houston Texans to upset the Jacksonville Jaguars because the Jaguars are three-point favorites here. So give me the Houston Texans to upset the Jaguars. Give me the Texans to win this game. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be good this year, but it's going to take him some time to develop into that. And there's nothing much around him that really wows me, that gives me any reason to believe that he's going to put up great numbers. So give me the Texans to win this game and give me the Texans to beat a three-point spread. And now moving on to probably one of my favorite games uh, for this week one uh, uh, matchups, and that's the Tennessee Titans against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Titans are at home in this game. Three-point favorites. But if you know anything about betting, if you know anything about Vegas, they give the home team three points automatically. So when you look at a game that's favoring the home team by three points, that's basically saying Vegas sees this as an even matchup. And there's plenty of reason to say this is a pretty even matchup. You look at that Arizona Cardinals offense, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins. Bills fans, remember what happened last season with DeAndre Hopkins, the Hail Murray, last second Hail, Hail Mary to beat the Buffalo Bills, the last loss in the regular season for the Buffalo Bills. You look at this Tennessee Titans offense. You got Ryan Tanner, you got Derrick Henry, who's led the league in rushing forever. It seems like at this point, you have Julio Jones coming in this season. You have Brown. There are so many great weapons over on the Tennessee Titans side of the ball. So now you look at these two defenses. Which defense can hold up more? Me, personally, I like the Tennessee Titans in this game. I haven't seen Arizona improve enough to think that they're ready to compete with these really good type playoff teams. And the Titans are a playoff team. Whether they win the AFC South or they're a wild card team, they're definitely going to be in the mix come January. So give me the Tennessee Titans to win this game. Give me the Titans to cover a three-point spread. And again, I just said this in the last matchup, this could be one of those games that land on the number, okay? There are a couple of games here, three points, seven points. This could be one of those games that land on the number. So I'll probably stay away from this game betting-wise unless I put in a teaser, but give me the Tennessee Titans to win this game. And if I had to pick, give me the Titans to cover a three point spread as bills fans were very excited or very interested at least in this next matchup afc's matchup between the new england patriots and the miami dolphins this game in new england to be honest honest in this one i would probably go with the home team either way uh to start off week one now miami always gives new england fits right even during the tom brady years even when they were rolling the super bowl at super bowl at super bowl division championship after division division championship miami always seemed to at least win one game against the new england patriots right now the new england patriots have a new quarterback tua has another year under his belt how does he do 
in year two. I like Flores as a head coach. I don't know how much I believe in Tua Tungavailoa. He has to prove it to me, and I just don't see those intangibles. His release time is slow. His checkdowns are slow. He tries to force the ball a little bit too much. You know, we saw in week one of the preseason, he threw a pick in the end zone. You just can't do that. He doesn't do a great job looking off defenders. Those are all things that, in my mind, are issues in the NFL. However, if you're a Dolphins fan, watch this and think I'm just a hater because I'm a Bills fan. No, I think this Miami Dolphins team is ridiculously good, minus Tua Tagovailoa. So if Tua Tagovailoa can just be a game manager type player, then I think this team will do pretty well. And let's not forget that Tua is less than two years removed from being, having an injury that some people thought he would never play football again, right? So he has plenty of time to grow. He has plenty of time to learn more and become more effective. Listen, when Josh Allen came into this league, everyone thought, thought that with his accuracy, he could never make it. And look where he is now, second MVP voting last year. But give me the Patriots. Give me Bill Belichick, always does well against young quarterbacks defensively. Give me the Patriots to win this game. However, Miami covers a three-point spread. Again, this could be one of those games that land exactly on the number. But give Miami to cover a three-point spread. Always play these guys tough. They're giving the New England Patriots to win the game. Moving on, we got the Giants playing against the Denver Broncos in New York. And this is another one of those games where if this game was in Denver, Denver would win this game easily, I think. I think that Denver has one of the best home field advantages out of any team in the NFL. But this game being in New York, Saquon Barkley comeback. Now, we're not sure how much time Saquon Barkley is going to play. Daniel Jones, let's see how he does. You have Joey Galloway there, or uh, Galladay there. Um, I don't know why I get confused. It's Kenny Galladay, not Joey Galloway. Obviously, I confuse some old players with some new ones every once in a while. But thanks for sticking around anyway. Remind me in the comment section about how much I screw this up. I, I used to call Derek Henry Travis Henry, so let's not forget that either. But let me know in the comment section. Uh, who you think's better, Kenny Galladay or Joey Galloway? But well, they have Kenny Galladay. I think he's an under, underrated wide receiver uh, in the NFL. Uh, give me the uh, New York Giants to actually win this game. I know Denver's favored. I know a lot of people uh, have a lot of upside for the Denver Broncos this season. That defense is still going to be pretty dang good. I just don't see it. I honestly don't see it. I think Denver still is going to struggle this year. Giving the New York Giants to win, giving the New York Giants to then as underdogs beat what is a three-point spread. Now when we got, got Aaron Rodgers, man, what drama he caused this offseason. Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers going into New Orleans and playing New Orleans Saints. Now listen, New Orleans is always a tough place to play. And Sean Payton is still there, but Drew Brees isn't. Okay, Drew Brees was a big factor in this team. And I know they have Tyree Kill, and they're going to have some game plan for Tyree Kill. Uh, uh, not Tyree Kill, uh, Hill. I forget his first name. You guys remind me in the comment section again. Uh, but yeah, they have Hill there, and he is going to to add something to this New Orleans, New Orleans Saints team. Uh, but James Winston, mm, I just – I'm. Not believer, and it's probably Teddy Bridgewater actually, but still not believer. Still not believer. Uh, I like the Packers. I like Aaron Rodgers. Give me the Packers to win this game. Give me the Packers to cover a four and a half point spread. And now a lot of people are looking forward to this next game. Again, I'm not as much. I'm not. I don't see the excitement around this one team that everyone else does. And we're talking about the Cleveland Browns. Okay, I don't see the excitement. Uh, and, you know, I know some people are saying that Cleveland's Kansas City's biggest threat. Well, we'll find out week one. We're going to find out week one, okay, because the Kansas City Chiefs go up against the Cleveland Browns week one, this game in Kansas City. And, you know, I talk about the home field advantage for Denver. Right behind them, if Denver has the best home field advantage, right behind them has to be the Kansas City Chiefs, a fan base that really contends with Bill's Mafia as far as one of the best fan bases personally, I think, at home, okay? They may not travel as well as Bills Mafia, but at home, the Kansas City Chiefs, I think they currently hold the record uh, for a lot of this crowd in open open roof stadium uh, in the Gans Book of World Records. So there's something we said about this Kansas City Chiefs home field advantage. I like the Chiefs a lot. You can't, you can't go wrong with the Chiefs here as far as winning this game. I personally 
I'm not on the Cleveland Brown train. Now, if they win this game, if they fall off the upset, maybe that will change my mind a little bit. But I just think Kansas City's offense is way too strong for them. I think Kansas City wins this game. I think Kansas City wins this game pretty easily. Give me Kansas City to win this game. Give me Kansas City to cover a six and a half point spread. Again, I won't be surprised if we 10, maybe 14 points. Uh, this is a game I'm very confident in. Give me Kansas City to win this game. Give me Kansas City to cover a six and a half point spread. Moving on to Sunday night football. Why was last game not the Sunday night football game? I don't know. Instead, they're going to make it the Chicago Bears and the L.A. Rams. The L.A. Rams make some improvements this year. Unfortunately, they lost their running back, Cam Akers, during the offseason with an ACL injury. But Matthew Stafford coming in, yeah, you can't argue that's an upgrade. Now, whether the upgrade is worth two first-round draft picks, that's not a discussion. But it definitely is an upgrade from Jared Goff. They still have great offensive firepower at wide receiver as well. So Stafford has a plethora of wide receivers to throw to. I really like what the LA Rams are doing. And I think the Rams are probably the favorite to win the NFC West for good reason. You look at this Bears team, maybe a little bit in rebuilding mode, right? They bring in uh, a new quarterback, Justin Fields. Very excited about that. They still have Andy Dalton in there though. And I think Andy Dalton is going to be the starter week one. I like the Rams in this game a lot. Again, I think the Rams are going to win this game, but seven and a half, again, two scores. You always have to be uh, tricky about that. Chicago at home. Give me the Los Angeles Rams to win this game. Sorry, Chicago's on the road, but still give me the Chicago Bears to, to cover the spread. Give me the Rams to win the game. Give me the Bears to cover a seven and a half point spread. Then you move on to Monday night. And uh, unlike, unlike a lot of other years, Monday night, you only have one football game. I don't know why this year. I know they have that that 17th game and the 18th week. Uh, but I do not know why this year there's only one Monday night football game. So if anyone knows why there's only one Monday night football game, put it in the comment section. But the Baltimore Ravens and the Las Vegas Raiders playing on Monday night football, it's actually going to be the first game in the new new Las Vegas stadium with fans. Last year, of course, no fans due to everything going on around the world. Uh, but now the fans are allowed back in the stands. I think it's going to be a great atmosphere, right? The Raiders in Vegas, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope they, they do uh, they do make it a lot of fun for the fans. They make it a great experience. It's a beautiful stadium. I can't wait till I visit it you know, in 20 years uh, when it's not as beautiful anymore, but that's okay. Uh, I do look forward to watching this game Monday Night Football, of course, week one. It'll be the last game of week one. Uh, but you look at this Baltimore Ravens team, they did just lose the running back Dobbins, uh, so that's going to hurt them a little bit. But I like Lamar Jackson. I think he's a little overrated, but still a really good quarterback. And you look at this team, the tight end's always scary. Uh, and then, you, of course, you have uh, Brown on the outside. You still have some big weapons, a decent defense. Give me the Baltimore Ravens to win this game. Give me the Baltimore Ravens to cover a four and a half point spread. So again, uh, guys, those are my picks for week one. And again, I'm very excited. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. What are your picks? Let me know if they're against the spread straight up. Like this video. And again, if you're playing, put some money where your mouth is. Go to mybookie.ag. That's mybookie.ag. And put promo code HTS to get a uh, double of your first deposit up to $1,000. So again, guys, thank you for joining me on this edition of Hashtag Sports. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And join me this Sunday as the Buffalo Bills. Go up against the Pittsburgh Seals. I'll give you live player play and reaction. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to this season. I'm glad we're back. I hope you're glad too. I'll talk to you all soon. Until I do, go Bills.